Hi everyone, Dr. Angela. Welcome back to Pretty Well. We're going to do some more talking about nutrition and naturopathic medicine in the backyard. We're going to focus on vitamin E in this video, vitamin E in the whole family. So a lot of times when we talk about vitamin E, uh, it's used synonymously with alpha tocopherol, which is a very truncated portion of the vitamin E family. There's eight different isoforms of vitamin E um, known as tocopherols and tocotrienols. And uh, we're going to talk about how there's some similar properties in all of those family members of the vitamin E family, but there's also some key differences. And so we want to talk about how to dose differently depending on what it is that we're trying to treat. Um, so just clarifying that vitamin E goes far beyond just alpha tocopherol and a lot of the um, vitamin E that is available over the counter very readily at health food stores is alpha tocopherol. So it's a very, you know, limited portion of the vitamin E spectrum family. Um, so there's alpha, beta, gamma, and delta tocopherols and tocotrienols. Um, the tocopherols were part of the vitamin E family that were discovered first. They were discovered earlier, so more research started around the 1920s on the tocopherols. And vitamin E and all of the family members of vitamin E, um, vitamin E is a very wonderful antioxidant. So back to all of our discussion on antioxidants and um, how protective antioxidants are for all of our cells within the body and how they help each other and recycle one another. There's definitely been some confusion on some of the study that's happened around vitamin E and the health benefits of vitamin E, both proactively and um, even with treatment, because, um, you know, we got really excited about this one member of the vitamin E family, the alpha tocopherols, but then we're really focusing research on this very isolated form of vitamin E and some reductionistic um, science happened around that or some confusion even because some of the other members of the vitamin E family are more helpful in other conditions. So we're going to talk about that. So kind of the umbrella of like, what, is, what does vitamin E do? What do the tocopherols and tocotrienols do in our body? Um, they are wonderful antioxidants. They also act as lubricants. They really help with, um, keeping our blood thin so we have good perfusion, good circulation of blood all throughout the body. They're also helpful in immune system function. I feel like that's one of those um, areas of vitamin E that we don't really think about. You know, a lot of us are familiar with the anti-scarring benefits of vitamin E and um, how helpful the vitamin E family is to nerve health. We'll get into some of the specifics, but I rarely ever hear anybody talk about um, increased T cell immunity from vitamin E, and it is indeed one of the studied areas with uh, vitamin E research. And so the Linus Pauling Institute, I love, they have such great data um, all in one centralized place on many of the studies. And so I'll put a link to their um, vitamin E page. Most of that is on tocopherols, but I'll put some other links uh, for the tocotrienol benefits as well so we can start to familiarize ourselves with the uh, tocotrienols. And part of the reason why we haven't heard as much about the tocotrienols is that came later in research. So like in the 60s, we started to study the tocotrienol family more on its own and then more research in the 80s and 90s and now you know we're pretty clear on some of those benefits one of the things that we're clear on in terms of these two kind of sub categories is that um, in order to receive optimal benefit, we really have to dose them at sec separate times during the day. So we can take them both, um, and we'll get into why we would take them both, but we really want to split our dosing by at least several hours. So maybe morning and night time, so morning tocotrienols, evening tocopherols, or vice versa, it doesn't matter which one goes where, um, or every other day, sometimes we can you know, just alternate which one we use at a different time, a different day. So some strategies on just keeping those separate so that we get the benefits. Um, one of the things that we've learned is that uh, the alpha tocopherol can inhibit some of the absorption of the gamma and delta tocopherols and tocotrienols, uh, especially the tocotrienols. So keeping tocotrienol dosing separate when we're trying to preferentially get some of the goodies from those nutrients. Okay. So um, in terms of, you know, what are we thinking about with clinical use of vitamin E? 
Well, first of all, let's back up a second. Where do we find the vitamin E family in food? Uh, mostly it's in nuts and seeds. Um, it is in vegetables in small amounts, but um, really nuts and seeds are gonna be your best sources. So things like um, hazelnuts and almonds. I've got some nice bags here, handy as props. Um, but any of the nuts and seeds are gonna be great sources. Um, it's great to keep nuts and seeds in the fridge because a lot of the fats in them, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, they do oxidize really easily and then they get damaged. So keeping um, nuts and seeds in the fridge or even freezer if you have a lot so they don't go bad. And many of us can really smell that distinct smell when a nut has turned and um, the oils have oxidized. We definitely do not want to be eating any oxidized oils. Um, but that is primarily in foods where we're going to find very high vitamin E content. Um, it's important to note that if there are any fat malabsorption issues, um, if a person completely avoids fats in their diet, they are going to be more likely to be deficient in um, the vitamin E family members. Um, and again, we can test this. I'll put links again for some of the tests where we can just kind of check our overall antioxidant levels, but we can also check um, our various levels of vitamin E as well, just to see how we're doing. Um, if we've had issues like we've had a gallbladder removed where fat um, digestion and absorption is harder, you know, we can certainly supplement with ox bile, we can supplement with pancreatic enzymes, other digestive enzymes to help us be able to digest and absorb fats um, more efficiently. So little, little helpers on getting more vitamin E into our system. All right, so thinking about, you know, the various benefits of vitamin E in terms of all of the systems in our body. Well, first of all, vitamin E lives within the cell membrane of all of our cells. So um, it is a protector of the cell membrane of each and every single cell, which makes it a very special um, and very powerful antioxidant. Those of you who might have watched the glutathione video that went up last week, glutathione and vitamin E play well with one another. Um, they definitely help recycle one another. In many of the videos where Dr. Patty and I are talking about antioxidants, we talk a lot about reactive oxygen species. Sorry, there is a helicopter. We'll just give it a second to pass. There we go. Backyard medicine, the risks. All right, so we've talked a lot about reactive oxygen species in the past, but there are also um, other types of reactive species in the body some also come from nitrogen and vitamin e um, and some of the various subcomponents of the vitamin e family can also really help us with those free radicals in the nitrogen family as well and so those have a particularly protective effect on our cardiovascular wellness as well so thinking about heart disease both prevention of oxidation of LDL cholesterol because that's one of the reasons why we can develop heart disease um, but also um, there are particular um, cholesterol lowering benefits and um, LDL lowering benefits that are specific to the tocotrienol family um, but you know part of this also is that we're looking at the gamma and the delta fractions of the vitamin e family subgroups and both the tocotrienols and the tocopherols um, seem to have more activity on helping us with the um, reactive nitrogen species as well so it's pretty interesting so vitamin e also very very protective to all of our neurology think nerve health and so anywhere we have nerves in the body certainly our brain lots and lots of nerves in the brain and so um, regular supplementation with good quality high quality vitamin e supplements and so when i say high quality um, i don't ever supplement with just alpha tocopherol if i'm giving tocopherols um, i will supplement the whole family so i i do like the um, supplements that are higher in the um, gamma spectrums and the delta spectrum components. Um, these are some I use quite a bit. This is one from Protocol, which is the same as Now Brand. I'll put these in the description box too. This is Unique E, which I love this company. That's all they make are uh, vitamin E, tocopherols, and tocotrienols. So they've got some really good stuff. These ones are not plant-based. So if you are plant-based, um, there are some out there. Diva Nutritionals makes some. I'll put those in the description box as well. Um, 
but so vitamin E is really, really protective of all of the nerves in the body, brain, so it really can help us with maintaining great brain health, preventing early onset of cognitive decline, certainly very helpful in neurodegenerative disorders, people who actually have dementia, Alzheimer's, um, vitamin E, very helpful. But you know, we wanna do as much protection as possible so we don't end up there as well. So um, anytime we're working on brain health, uh, vitamin E is in my top picks. Um, and I would use both tocopherols and tocotrienols, but just at different times. Um, eyes, eyes are very rich in nerves. Um, vitamin E is protective against macular degeneration. It's also very helpful in prevention of cataracts. Um, so very helpful for our eyes. Any nerve pain, and nerve pain can come from you know various uh, causes. We can have, nerve damage in our periphery. Um, peripheral neuropathy is you know, what that's generally referred to. Vitamin E is very protective and helpful for treatment even. Um, also, neuropathies that come from things like um, viral infections. So um, post-herpetic neuralgia is what that's often referred to as Vitamin E can be very calming to inflamed nerves. So bringing down inflammation is gonna bring down pain in the nerves. So think trigeminal neuralgia, um, anybody who's had shingles anywhere in the body, um, Bell's palsy can be very helpful in those you know, kinds of conditions. Um, because vitamin E also has um, a wonderful, it has an antioxidant uh, benefit, but it also has um, an anti-fibrinolytic um, effect. So it, it prevents fibrosis in the body is what I'm trying to communicate. It prevents scarring. Um, it can be really helpful for skin, but it can also be helpful in conditions like when people have started to develop fatty liver disease and they're at risk of things progressing to cirrhosis. Uh, vitamin E is very protective in that situation. It's very helpful for people who have type 2 diabetes as well. We definitely um, end up with more oxidative stress and damage in the body when we have uncontrolled diabetes, and so vitamin E, very helpful at um, bringing some of that down in the body. Um, other kinds of things to think about with vitamin E, um, circulation in general. So people who suffer from Raynaud's and have changes in circulation in their hands, Vitamin E can be one of the um, uh, one of the supplements that's really helpful in the treatment of Raynaud's. Um, it's helpful in erectile dysfunction, so any kind of circulatory changes, um, any kind of scarring, so Peyronie's disease as well for men. So I mean, so much good benefit to you know taking tocopherols and tocotrienols, um, but with the tocotrienols now, they do have the additional cholesterol lowering benefits, um, specifically for total cholesterol and LDLs that are separate from what we would see with regular tocopherols. Um, to take a minute to think, I'm going to just scan some notes and see if there's anything else that I want to tell you guys. Um, oh, also the um, tocotrienols, very helpful for bringing down cytokines as well. So cytokines are part of our immune system that um, bring on inflammation when we're fighting, you know, various infections. And, you know, while it sounds like a good thing and it can be in certain situations, if we have unchecked inflammation and too much inflammation, we can end up with more damage in tissues. So um, the tocotrienols are very helpful at modulating the cytokine response. And they're also um, beneficial at modulating adhesion. So a lot of us after surgery get scar tissue um, in excessive amounts. Uh, some organs can literally you know, have scar tissue connect them like in the pelvic cavity or things like that. So taking um, tocotrienols as well as tocopherols, but tocotrienols specifically for the adhesions um, after surgeries or with other kinds of like maybe endometriosis, other conditions where there's just a lot of adhesions forming in the body. Um, oh, and cancers. Uh, cancers. Um, so there's been a lot of debate about this, about how, you know, vitamin E is not that helpful in cancer after all, and yes, it is, but again, most of the research was just looking at alpha tocopherol, which is not the whole story. And if we're using high doses of alpha tocopherols, we are blocking the activity of 
the gamma and delta tocotrienols, which have even, you know, they have a very strong antioxidant activity and are thought to be very helpful in cancer treatments and preventions, um, as well as the gamma delta fractions in the tocopherols. So, you know, really wanting mixed gamma tocopherols and higher spectrums of the gamma and delta um, if we're really wanting extra antioxidant help as well. Um, so I think that's what I've got for you guys on vitamin E, tocotrienols, tocopherols. Um, I will, of course, um, build out the description box as usual with all these details and more specifics, more of the specific nuts and seeds, some study links, some supplement um, brands that I like um, that are really good quality. Um, if you guys have other questions, if you want to know more, if you want to share more, feel free, comment section below. Um, one more thing just popped into my head, of course. Um, so back to the functions of vitamin E, also thinking about vitamin E as a lubricant. So um, mucous membranes, when we've got dry mucous membranes, like dry eyes, dry mucosa anywhere, um, vitamin E can also be a good helper. And we've talked about it in other videos, but breast health, when women have painful fibrocystic breast changes, vitamin E is super helpful. Okay, now I think that's all I've got for you guys on vitamin E. Let us know what you want to learn about. Dr. Patty and I will see you back here soon. Um, yep, we do our best to cover as much as we can in terms of all the suggestions that come in. Um, so keep asking the questions, keep giving us content requests, and we'll be back here with you guys as soon as we can be. We love you all. Stay super healthy. We hope this helps you on your healing journey. We'll be back here with you guys soon. Take care.